Air Live. Brought to you by Helene Curtis, makers of Stop F deodorants. Flowing cream, spray, and stick. Suave hairdressing and shampoo plus egg. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. Thank you. I would like to explain that the reason we're not all walking in tonight is because I can't stay in that position due to the fact that I uh, was vaulting some railings thinking I was only 16, but it turned out I am not 16 and my Achilles heel was found and I just couldn't walk on tonight. And so I was carried on and so were the rest of the panel. <laughs> <laughs> And so to my left, the first gentleman that you're going to meet, always a witty, amusing man that you will absolutely roar at in his new picture, the Mad Ball. Crazy. That is you, <laughs> Ernie Kovac. And now to my left, an even more serious case, the lady who broke one of my cigars. <laughs> On my left are panelists who publishes the book out of which John Daly gets all of his long words, the American <laughs> College Dictionary. And he gets a few, too. Bennett Sir. <laughs> On my left is the juvenile member of this troupe, the only one who was able to hobble out here under his own steam tonight, <laughs> our panel moderator, John Charles Daly. Gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. And because we want to get sweet Arlene's mind off her busted ankle, we're going to depart from some of our usual practices. Panel, please put on your masks. We'll have uh, some interesting occupations, needless to say. This should be the mark of an interesting evening. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before the panel a bit later in the show, and we'll meet our first challenger in just one minute. Well, for the usual good and sufficient reasons, we've asked you to blindfold yourselves, panel. Are the blindfolds all in place? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Now, sir. Good. Let's meet our first contestant. Will you come in and sign in, please? <laughs> all right, I wonder, are you familiar with our scoring system? If you're familiar with our scoring system, let's let the people at home and our friends here in the theater know exactly what your line is. <laughs> now, needless to say, panel, you have been asked to blindfold yourselves because there is an area of identification here of which we had reason to have some fears. So let's just leave it that our guest is salaried and we'll begin the general questioning with Arlene Francis. Do you work for a profit-making organization? Hmm. <laughs> Was that a yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, has your face appeared in the papers in the last six months? Hmm. Yes. Small picture. <laughs> uh, would you be in any area of show business? Hmm. Are uh, you a performer? Oh, so. Uh, do you appear in the theater at all? Hmm? Uh, would you be considered an actress? <laughs> Somebody just fell down. <laughs> uh, actually, Arlene, we would have to agree that our guest is an actress. Needless to say, you've all, I'm quite sure, come to realize that we have a rather special area of identification here so that we'll go on with the fact known that our guest is an actress, yes. Uh -huh. uh, are you performing at the present time in a New York theater? Mm. Yes. 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 <laughs> uh, since there seemed to be some area of... Um, not doubt that you were an actress, but uh, that 
the acting might be, in a broader sense, might you appear perhaps in nightclubs? Mm -hmm. uh, do you sing? Yes. Not like that, I hope. <laughs> Are you at the present time singing in a nightclub? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Kovacs. Uh, I saw something in the newspapers uh, not too long ago. You're not that little 32-inch alligator that was found in the backyard in Westport, are you? <laughs> no. You are, you are, are currently on the stage. Uh, yes. Um, and, and, and a, a show that is currently in New York. Heavens, yes. <laughs> Would you repeat that inflection? Yes. Uh, I, I smell a, not only a certain perfume, but a certain inflection, uh, this isn't my... <laughs> you aren't my wife, are you? <laughs> Judy Adams, Mrs. Ernie Kovacs. I'll never wear perfume on television again. Oh. No, I, I was kidding about the perfume, but that heaven's no or heaven's yes, whatever it was. Why aren't you home with the dishes? <laughs> <laughs> I bet the house will be a mess when we get back. What is it, Ernie? Is that phrase spoken as, as Edie speaks in Little Abner, which is... No, it's, it's uh, when, when you're married, John, to a woman for a number of years, you, there are many little things that become <laughs> near and dear I to you. I tried the comb and everything. I thought you knew every voice that I had, and I tried a new voice and... Well, you were very good because until John repeated actress, I thought it was a man. <laughs> <laughs> we could have ruined the program and the marriage and everything. Oh, <laughs> dear, dear, dear. Oh, me, I thought that was John Daly's program. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> Miss Adams, I would like to add that there is no area of doubt about your being an actress. You are, and a wonderfully good one, too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Edie. We didn't fool you very long with that, in spite of all of our careful plans and efforts, but perhaps we can do more damage this time. Will our next contestant come in and sign in, please? S. Howard Collins, is that right? <laughs> Seraphine, and is it uh, Miss or Mrs. Howard Collins? It is Miss. Miss Howard yes. Collins. Miss Howard Collins. What do we do, actually? This is something you'll have to instruct us. Are you known as Miss Collins or Miss Howard oh, Collins? Oh, just Miss Collins. Miss Collins. Yes. Miss Collins, the panel. And now will you come over here and join me? Uh, where are you from, by the way? London. From London. Oh, it's nice to have you with us. I wonder if you're familiar with the way we keep score, are you? Well, I've seen the show once before. Oh, well, fine. It's very easy, actually. You give them a good resounding no, and I'll flip a card, ten flips, and you've won the game. Fine. All righty, now let's uh, let the folks at home and our friends here in the theater know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right, panel, Miss Collins is self-employed, and let's begin the general questioning with uh, Bennett Cerf. Miss Collins is a very famous Collins family in London in the publishing business. Have you got anything whatever to do with the world of books? No. One down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Miss Collins, do people come to you for your services? Yes. Uh, do you uh, represent... Oh, no, you're self-employed, aren't you? That's I'm right. sorry. Is there any product whatsoever connected with what you do? Yes. Is it a useful product? Yes. It's, it, uh, uh, it has various... Um, Uses? Aspects. You'd say that in some circumstances, it's, it, uh, the general product could be quite useful. In other circumstances, you might not consider that uh, use factors were the predominant ones. Mm -hmm. That's a very well, well 
That was the help, Joe. Well, uh, I want to do everything I can for that busted ankle of yours. Can one hold the product in one's hand? Yes. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm afraid we can't do that, Arnie. Even if you're as strong as I am? Even if you're as strong as you are. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Kovacs. Uh, is, is this something that's bigger than a BB gun? Yes. Yes. Uh, this, this may seem ambiguous, but there is something behind it. Uh, it. Would you say this is bigger than the young boy who is tall for his age? <laughs> I just did that for you, Arlene, for John, you know that. I want to know what was behind it. Is, it. Uh, is this something that, you, uh, that people come to you to have you take this product and do things to them or for them? Yes. Oh, wait a minute, let's hear that again. Oh, um, she got it, John, it's all right. <laughs> do things uh, to them or for them yes. with the product? Yes. To them or for them. It's a bit difficult, isn't it? You have a choice. Yeah, let's you give them a no anyway. That makes it three down and seven to go, Miss Jill Gallon. I don't think we can say, Ernie, in the context of the question, that uh, an affirmative answer would be meat and inequity. Ms. At least, at least. Yeah. Is this product solid rather than liquid? <laughs> Is it something you couldn't buy in a grocery store? Oh, definitely. Uh, would you say that it was not apparel of any kind? Could you put anything into it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I would think you could put something into it if you... Is it meant to have something put into it? I beg your pardon? Is it... <laughs> Is it meant to have something put into it? Is it designed to have something put into it? Well, let us say that all of the apparatus or the availabilities necessary to put something into it are there. Could anyone in the panel get into it? <laughs> no, four dollars big to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Collins, was this product ever alive? Oh, yes. Oh, what a horrible thought. Is the... <laughs> Is the product alive when you deal with it? It is, yes. Uh, is it uh, some kind of an animal? Yes. Is it an animal that would not be considered a domestic animal? <laughs> no. Well, now, actually, well, here, I think no Bennett may have a special connotation. By What is your connotation of a domestic well, animal? Uh, an animal that would be found ordinarily around a farm. In other words, you would consider an animal ordinary found, ordinarily found around the farm as a domestic That's animal. Right. And you would not... Well, I mean useful around the farm, not a snake or something that might just happen to crawl around the farm. <laughs> You're doing great, Bennett. That's five down and five to go. Miss Francis, this is a domestic animal. Is it a furry animal? Yes. Now, there <laughs> again, we are going to have trouble. Let's I don't mean it. furry, but fuzzy. Fuzzy? Oh! <laughs> Fuzzy. I mean, it was a little fuzzy. I oh, mean, a little wait. fuzzy. You're a little fuzzy, if actually, Ronald. <laughs> no, I don't think, I think here again... No fuzz. Oh, no, I, well, no, not exactly fuzz. I'm awfully sorry. That makes it six down and four to go. We wouldn't be able to describe it to you, even though uh, Miss Collins is willing to be generous as a furred animal, because it would m mislead you, you know? Mr. I don't Kovac. think it would. You could let me ask <laughs> another question. <laughs> I can't. Me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I give a thousand dollars to be home. <laughs> <laughs> do you have more than one of these? Yes. Uh, do do uh, might uh, a group of them be called the flock? <laughs> oh no! Is this something bigger than a pig? Oh yes, it is. Does it have? what you might call a hide or hair, if not fur? Yes. It has four legs? Yes. A flock of tigers? It is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, does it have any horns? Horns? Horns. I don't think it no does. Horns. No horns. Eight down and two to go, Mr. Surf. Miss Collins, is this any member of the horse family? Yes. You have something to do with horses? 
Yes. Yes. Now we have to find out what it is. Yes. yes. Do you train horses and uh, no. no. race them? No. Nine down and one to go, Miss Francis. Do you break horses? No. Ten down and no more to go, and Miss Collins like buys and sells race horses. <laughs> Collins. Point here. Would you call a racehorse a domestic animal? Yes. Well, actually, we gave you the right to make the basic definition. If you'd find it around a farm, yes. You, they call areas uh, that are devoted to raising horses horse farms, for instance. They're domesticated, tamed. Strictly speaking, domesticated mean fully under the supervision and control of a human being, which they are. My reference was, I thought perhaps you meant inside the house kind, and I haven't had a racehorse in the house as a pet for a long time. <laughs> what? <laughs> Miss Collins, we stuck the panel, and thank you very much. It was thank wonderful you. you to be our guest, and nice to have you visiting us from England. Good night. And would you take Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity for which I've asked my friends on the panel once again to blindfold themselves. Blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, sir. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? Panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. You'll ask one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and we'll begin it all with Ernie Kovacs. Thank you, John. Are you uh, in the entertainment business? Uh, yes. Miss Kilgallen? I thought for a minute it might be Edie back again in a <laughs> bathing suit. Jane Mansfield back. <laughs> uh, are you an actress? Rather. Mr. Sir? Are you a motion picture star? Rather. Miss Francis? Have you, are you here in New York to publicize a particular picture? Yes, as a matter of fact. Thank you. Mr. Kovacs? <laughs> uh, do you live near Marlon Brando? Heavens, no. <laughs> One down and nine to go, Miss Gilgallen. Have you ever appeared on the stage? Mm, no, I don't believe. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Surf. Are you... John will have to answer this. Are you young and beautiful? Yes, sir. <laughs> no. The yes will stand, Miss Francis. Are you a brunette? Sometimes. <laughs> it's true of so many of us. <laughs> Are you a brunette tonight? <laughs> a yes. Yes, Miss Kilgallen. Is the picture that you're here to publicize opening next week? No. Mr. Surf, that's three down and seven to go. Are you married to somebody who is well known to? To what? <laughs> <laughs> to the general public. I meant uh, to yes, T double. Uh, yes, I do believe so. Miss Fred believes. Are you under contract to a studio? rather than freelancing? No. That no? makes it four down and six to go, Mr. Kovacs. I, I don't mean to say this because I work there, but seriously, uh, are, is this a Columbia picture? I beg your pardon. Pardon? I beg your pardon. <laughs> I could give one more pardon and still be honest with it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. Oh, oh. Uh, is the picture that uh, you uh, are in a Columbia picture? Uh, no, as a matter of fact. Five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Were you born in the United States of America? Yes. Mr. Sir. Going back to this well-known husband of yours, is he also an, in the entertainment business? 
You mean as a performer, Bennett, or in any other way? Oh, well, there are other ways. No, I mean in any other way. <laughs> what happened? I only hmm. have seen. Hmm? Has everybody gone home? It's very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, well, Bennett, we're well, a little afraid of misleading you here. Well, I let would... me put it in another way. I'm I changing the question, frankly, because of the way you answered, John. Mm -hmm. uh, is he famous in something other than show business? Yes. Miss Francis. Uh, have you been on the road quite often with a couple of very important male stars? In the nicest sense of the word, that is. <laughs> Mm, yes. Oh, now you've done it. I was, I I've torn it. Yes, you've done it. You've <laughs> done it. Um, is, is, uh, and I'm going to sound like uh, uh, an idiot now for you, Arlene. Um, you're one of two people. This I know. <laughs> you're either Bing Crosby or Bob Hope. Yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, uh, are you, you are famous for wrapping uh, something around you while you did these two things, uh, did, did these things on the road with these two gentlemen? Wrong. No. What? That no. makes it six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. Oh! It isn't. No. It's the other one. It's the other one. Yes. <laughs> I passed. They just lost would, me on the would road. Would this husband of yours be famous because he was a, a very wonderful football That's, player? Yes. yes. I may kill you. <laughs> Nevertheless, <laughs> it's Miss Jane Russell. Miss Jane yeah! Russell. <laughs> May I ask Ernie a question? Because I think Miss Jane would like to have the answer. What did having live, having Down living down. near uh, Marlon Brando have to do with her? Her voice. I couldn't understand her. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. I knew I couldn't fool Bennett. Well, actually, you fooled them all for quite a long yes, while. Did. Yes, I did, yes, as a matter of fact. Yes, when, is, when is Fuzzy Pink Night going to open? It's like in September oh, sometime, it's like September. John. It's, it's not, not next time. week. No. That's, that's the thing I think that threw That them didn't throw you, did it, Roy? No. That wasn't it. And I think <laughs> we ought to... I'm sorry, Ari. I think we ought to identify the uh, famous football player, you being Mrs. Bob Waterfield. Mr. Right. Bob Waterfield <laughs> is the husband who won a very great reputation. Could I really want to know is who wrapped what around them on the road? Uh, <laughs> uh, Marcy Lamore. Lamore with a sarong. You see, I, I was... I, I don't mean to say this with your broken foot and everything, but I was off on another thing until we had the road business brought in, and then I went to Dorothy with her sarong. He might say, Ernie, has never been sarong. No. <laughs> I'm and now, at least Bennett has given me a reason to wear perfume or cologne. <laughs> <laughs> George, I'll start doing it if you keep that up, Bennett. Promise you. Well, Miss Jane, I do thank you very much. It's a long time since we have carried the panel this far. Oh, and, I'm uh, very happy. I thought they'd get it in a minute. I <laughs> thought it was an, an entire mistake. <laughs> Actually, it was worth watching Jane's face, because when we really started, you could see she was afraid somebody was going to get it. She got up to five, and she began to beam. <laughs> thought you all had, had you all on the hook. Well, we wish Fuzzy Pink Night Gone a lot of success, and there's a special reason, because this is a picture you produced as well as started. That's right. And we hope it's, it's a very <laughs> well, Robert big success. Robert Waterfield now is in the... Uh, business, you see. That was the problem we had with you, Bennett, because you see... He is in picture yeah. business. Bob yeah. is associated with Miss Jane in producing the picture, so he had an... Well, anyway, we yes, dunked the there question. there we go. You Thanks see. very much Thanks, for being John. our guest, and will you Bye. say goodnight to the party? Bye. a few seconds to remind you of something. Those of you at home who would like to apply to puzzle our panel with your occupation have a very simple procedure to follow. Send a snapshot, one you can spare because it can't be returned. Your name, your address, your occupation. And send all of this to What's My Line, CBS, 485 Madison Avenue, New York, 22 New York. And send it to What's My Line, not to me. If you send it to me, it's merely delayed because it has to be forwarded. And now... Broken ankle and all, 
Until next week, Miss Arlene, and lots of success on your own show this week. Good night. Thank you, John. Good night, Good night, Bennett. Good night, John. And good night, Bennett and Ernie. It was wonderful having you with us, and uh, I'm sorry we didn't give you more trouble with Mrs. Ernie Kovacs, but we give you a little bit. He's now. got enough trouble with Mrs. Ernie Kovacs. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What's My Line? Transportation for What's My Line was arranged by American Airlines. Guests are flown to New York aboard America's famous luxury flight, the DC-7 Mercury. <laughs> this has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Totman production in association with the CBS Television Network.